It is Latin night at the Pulse, a gay nightclub in downtown Orlando, packed with 320 people. And this video of people dancing taken just last night, and then at 2.02 a.m., bartenders announcing last call, when suddenly, the gunfire. You could start smelling the ammunition in the air. Like, it smelled like fire. Was your instinct to hit the ground? I just wanted to get as low to the floor as I could and try to crawl into safety. As that gunfire erupted, you could hear it from the outside. Oh my God, they're all shooting back and forth. Our officer uh, engaged in a gun battle with that suspect. Uh, the suspect at some point went back in inside the club where more shots were fired. You see people screaming and falling and there was blood everywhere. The nightclub has three main areas, the hip hop room, the main bar with the dance floor, and a patio area. Some people escaping out this side door and into this small alleyway. Jean Yell telling me he crawled on the floor, reaching through the curtains to find a sliver of an exit, but that people were climbing over one another to get out. Um, people were jumping over you. Trying people to get were out? trying to jump over me, like pushing my head down. Like it's it's a state of panic. Like we just wanted to get out. Another survivor, Joshua, telling us how he hid under an SUV, discovering a survivor who'd been shot in both arms and in the back. He took off his shirt and used it as a tourniquet. I took my shirt off. I tied it as tight as I could over the first wound. Um, second one, I took his shirt, tied it over that one. Um, thought he was okay. I kind of like held him over like my, his arm over my shoulder and vice versa. No ambulance is left. Police told him to get in the back of the cruiser and to give the man a bear hug. 2.08 a.m. and the Pulse nightclub posts this on Facebook. Everyone get out of Pulse and keep running. But inside, the frantic scene continues. So many looking for the exits, others hiding in rooms with no way out. I saw him. He was maybe 20, 30 feet away from me. And I saw the fire coming out of his gun every time he shot fire. About 15, 20 people got shoved into a one-person bathroom until he started shooting through the doorway. Dozens who did not make it out, becoming hostages, stuck inside. Some huddled inside a bathroom, just off the dance floor, texting loved ones. Call police, I'm going to die. He called him a terrorist, has them in the women bathroom, and please come get us out, because he's about to kill us. And in the midst of the attack, the killer himself. Authorities say he called 911 to pledge his allegiance to the terror group, ISIS. Authorities sending armored vehicles and SWAT teams, they rushed to the scene. But for nearly three hours, they hold their fire, waiting outside. We're being told possibly up to uh, 15 remaining in the club that are barricaded in. Why did the SWAT team wait three hours? In that time, we need to set up, reevaluate, re reassess what's, what's happening, and make sure that all the pieces are in place. And Around right 5 a.m., explosions at the club. Some sort of uh, ex explosion or. Moments or some later, sort of we learn it's a controlled explosion sure. set off by police to distract the gunmen. An armored vehicle smashes through a wall of the club, and SWAT officers swarm in behind. Look at that, just shooting back. Eleven of them suddenly involved in a shootout with the killer. I, we had 11 Orlando police officers uh, that exchanged gunfire with the suspect and killed him. Authorities say the shooter revealed to be 29-year-old Omar Mateen, a U.S. citizen born in America with Afghani parents. Police say he used two guns, authorities revealing he purchased both of them in recent days. It was a handgun and an AR-15 type assault rifle. One round injuring an officer during the firefight, this damaged Kevlar helmet may have saved his life. And it is with great sadness that I share we have not 20 but 50 casualties. In addition to the shooter, there are another 53 that are hospitalized. Making this because the deadliest the mass shooting in U.S. history. Although it's still early in the investigation, we know enough to say that this was an act of terror and an act of hate. The 15th time President Obama has addressed the nation since taking office after a mass shooting on U.S. soil. We do have an ABC News exclusive here tonight as we now get a new portrait of what it was like inside that nightclub as the gunman asked people their racial backgrounds, began talking about ISIS and holding them essentially hostage for several hours. This one survivor you're about to hear the tale of was in there for three hours as SWAT teams was, were assembling right outside here before they broke through those walls. And Gio Benitez talked to him a short time ago as he was leaving the hospital tonight. Gio is across town here in Orlando. Gio? That's right, David. We are at the largest gay club in Orlando, and this is where we met that survivor. He played dead for three hours and was just released from the hospital. In fact, he's still wearing those hospital ID tags. Listen in. 
uh, he heard them on the, um, you know, talking probably to the police department or texting, and he asked them, please do not text. And so they stopped, but then somebody started the texting back up again, and he said, didn't I say don't text? Give me all your phones, who's in here? Are you guys black? And a couple of them said, yeah. He said that I don't have an issue with the blacks. And then he got on the phone, I don't know if it was with the news or, or the uh, police department, telling them that to stop, America needs to stop bombing ISIS in So he Syria. was calling people on the phone? Yeah, he called somebody on the phone. And he was telling them stop bombing ISIS? Stop bombing ISIS on the, uh, in Syria. Then he called somebody else that he knew, and he mentioned that uh, that he was the fourth shooter, and there was three others, and he mentioned, I believe, a female name, and that was playing dead, or, you know, because he's saying that she, she has a bombing vest, and he has one too. And then he said there were three snipers out there uh, waiting for cops to come so the snipers would shoot at the cops. So this whole time, what were you doing? I mean, you must have heard all this gunfire. Yeah. Uh, I stood quiet. You know, I said, I don't think he knew we were there until he came back in and shot again. And one black boy came crawling underneath the stall, grasping our legs and, and having me and my friend to drop to the floor. And he would go wash his hands and use the hair, the, the, the blower. And I felt something poke the back of my pocket. You think he was poking I, you? Yeah, one, it was like one quick touch or poke. I don't know if he was with the, I didn't know what he had to use as a weapon, but he probably was thinking of, you know, I'm dead. <laughs> so you played dead for yeah, three hours Yes, straight. and my friend followed the role, you know, quiet. I heard the cops screaming, get down, get down. It looked like they were getting closer. I don't know, they pulled people from the other side of the, of the club there out. He was busy fixing his rifle, or I don't know what he had, but he was busy clicking, fixing. I heard shells drop, you know, shells dropping on the floor. And he was happy that he got it fixed, and he said, oh, I got, I got a, plenty of bullets. He said, I've got plenty of Plenty bullets. of extra bullets. He started shooting in the stall, and I don't know if he was killing the ones in the back stall, and the cops bust a hole in the wall. What did you see when you walked through that club? No, I did and not. He says, I, he they said, took me out of the hole in the wall. And he says that he is a mentor to a lot of the young people in this community. He says he knew 75% of the people in that club, especially all of those who died. David. Chilling to still see that hospital band around his wrist, Gio. We're glad he's okay.